Hi, everybody, and welcome to a, uh, I guess, a special emergency episode of the Pocket Players Podcast, and what might be a pilot episode for something entirely different altogether. We'll see how that goes. But uh, we're going to call this for now the Switchcast, and joining me for this very special event is our classic and OG Pocket Player, JV. Hi, guys. Haven't heard from me in a while. I swear I'm not dead. (laughs) <laughs> despite See, right all here. my best efforts well <laughs> well yes but um definitely here super excited for what we have to talk about and if you haven't guessed by the name it's pretty obvious what we're what we're excited about today yes yes we are talking about the well what we would be referring to as the nx for many weeks but today we know it to be called the switch it's happening it's actually happening <laughs> yes I, I love it we've been talking about like all the emails i've been getting for like the last couple of weeks have been when are we going to learn some details about the nx what do you think about the nx and i could say i know nothing i can't say anything other than i've always said like we, i was going to be a portable handheld uh, slash console hybrid that came out to be true right right that's that's been a rumor for a while now people yeah. were speculating that it would be a console handheld hybrid and there were some you know old patents that kind of hinted at that direction but now that we have confirmed details it's exactly in our wheelhouse i think uh yes 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 indeed it you know it's not pocketable i mean it's definitely not like i think but it is backpackable but like i said uh this might become the future just d- direction of the pocket players like we just might be the switch cast uh, I have, you know, we've been doing the pocket players for five years. You believe it's been five years this month? That's so long. Yeah. I know. It's huge amount of time. Right. But I guess kind of like, uh, just to kind of do a state of the union little mention here is that we're, we're at a point where we could either continue being this one small kind of, you know, podcast in a well-established and, uh, field that has plenty of people who are covering it. And, you know, I know I got my style you guys love, you know, you, you guys have supported me through it. But we can all. But here we have a chance to be the forerunner, the focused forerunner for this, you know, new thing that I think is going to be, you know, huge. I, I have a lot of excitement for this. I have a lot of optimism for where this, uh, where the switch is going. Right. Exactly. We definitely want to hit the ground running on this subject matter, since the fact that it encompasses both handhelds and console gaming. It really broadens our our ability to cover things. Yeah, well, you've never really been that huge. Like, like you definitely are more of a console PC type gamer. And right. I, I, you are the only one I know that bought a shield. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes. But that ties into it because that shield, that ship that was for that, designed for that, is part of what went into this right exactly the Nvidia um, like you know technology that was like their, yeah. their, their training ground it's actually pretty interesting because um we can go over this type of discussion in future episodes but right from the get-go Nvidia announced that they were partnering with Nintendo for this for this project mm-hmm. and I think um it, essentially there's a lot of speculation about how the new Tegra X1 chip that was supposed to be for the Shield 3 is now being utilized in the Switch. Yes. I think it's kind of it's kind of awesome. No, it's, That's, a, it's a great partnership. Definitely, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's some really good technology behind the Switch, I think. And um, it, I'm excited to see how it goes. So, since all that we really kind of have to see about how it will go is the trailer we got to see today, let's go break down this trailer and talk about yeah. what we saw and talk about you know, what we can glean from the, from what we've seen in this trailer. Yeah. Yeah. We can definitely start with uh, the trailer, at least scene by scene. Yeah. Right. Right. So yeah, we started off, we just see guy in a house at night or early morning, I guess it turns out to be. And he's playing at home. He's playing, uh, what is, what's the Zelda call of the wild yeah. or a breath of the wild breath of the wild. I've never gotten yeah. that right yet on the show. <laughs> And, well, I mean, I could be wrong. Yeah, it's Breath of the Wild. I'm correct. <laughs> yes. Okay. He's playing that. Also, uh, I'll, I'll just say that this is some of the first... Uh, I haven't gotten to see too much combat in the game before this. So yeah. 
we they showcased some of it in E3, yeah. and uh, they showcased some gameplay of it. Mm-hmm. But seeing it run on uh, the next generation console, it's, it's it looks pretty nice. Right. So at this point, he's playing it. Um, I think he's playing it with a regular controller. Uh, yeah, the pro controller, I believe, is what people are calling it right um, now. Yeah. It, it looks like it's the controller that um, attaches to the three game pads that inevitably make up the buttons and the joystick for the handheld device. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah, at this point, he's probably playing because it looks like... Yeah, right. So the main controller thing is it looks like a battery pack almost. Right. And then the two nubbins that make the two halves of the... You know, the two edges of the controller with all the buttons... Right. It's hard to describe what those two things are. Like, what should we call them? I'm calling them the nubbins. Okay, okay. Or uh, or well, we can call them the dog ears because that picture you sent. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty perfect. Yeah. If you look at the Nintendo Switch on the little dock thing, it looks like a dog. Yeah. A derpy faced dog. So, um, I, I but I think at this point he was still using the main controller because what happens is, you know, his dog gets up, he's going to take it for a walk, and then he gets up and he takes the nubbins off of a pedestal that is on like the on the nightstand on the, on the you know the table yeah and so they've been sitting on this little stand connected to the battery pack which is like probably it's charger or can be used as part of the controller he takes right. those off slides them onto the tablet part that's connected to the tv well you know it's it's like in a dock the tablet's in a right. docking station now I don't know if if this is something maybe it's just a graphic of just something they did for aesthetics. I don't think I've seen in any of the scenes wires connecting the station to any of the TVs in this trailer. Hmm. I, so I have the trailer right now, yeah. and it does look like there are wires from the dock to the TV. Okay, because uh, yeah. I was looking later on when he goes to the second house. Um, I, I feel like I, I'm pretty sure I see no wires going from it, from that station to the TV, which made me wonder if it's possible that there's like, you know, a wide wireless bit that can be used to like connect it to right. TVs or not. But I'm not sure. That just might be something they did to, you know, make this shot look clean. I don't know. Right. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure I see wires here and, okay. um, there's no real reason for them to waste technology on that type of wireless <laughs> connectivity so eh, you know if it's just the docking station to connect to a tv at least that you can put a little more technology into for the right. the, the home console part because all the working all the it's like the processing is in the tablet you know which i think is is a brilliant idea for this for this concept yeah yeah all right so he slides those things on he takes it out and that's what I, I, i'm already pulled in by the sound of this of this trailer because every sound is so satisfying it's true it's true it's specifically that clicking noise when yeah, right. the nintendo switch logo comes down together mm-hmm. to form essentially the controllers it, it's so satisfying yeah so he takes it to the park uh we see him playing now the same exact game he's playing the zelda game right where he left off in the park um how big would you say this uh, looks like now in his hands here about Kindle oh, size? That's like what it feels like about the same size as the Kindle Fire that we have. I can see it. Uh, it's it's hard to say. I don't think we have that many details regarding uh, the screen size right now, but I can I can guess it's about seven inches. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's definitely bigger than any actual handheld. Yes. Console. So far. Yeah. Right. It's be- it's bigger than any Vita. Right. Let's say that the Vita. And what was the shield? The shield had that attachable screen thingy to it, right? Right, right, right. And, well, the shield that I have, it has a foldable screen. It folds over. Okay, yeah. Like a 3DS. But it's not It's not particularly big. This screen looks actually uh, tablet-sized, a full-on tablet-sized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which begs the question, the first thing I thought of when I saw him p- take it outside was... Where's his case? I mean, I'm, like <laughs> that screen is gonna get so scratched. Yeah, that is gonna be messed up. I, I mean, obviously they'll they'll sell. They can't wait to sell me that accessory as well. But I want to see what the case that this is gonna be put in and covering the screen when I'm traveling or throwing it in my rucksack. Uh, what it's going to uh, you know look like? Because right, that's how I'm right. really gonna be carrying this thing. 
Okay, so in order to get us going on the right foot really quickly, uh-huh. um, the little nubbins that we were talking about are called Joy-Con controllers. Joy-Con controllers. Joy-Con controllers. And All right. the tablet is estimated to be about 6.5, 6, 7 inches. All right, pretty close. Pretty so close. I was about right. So I was about right. Good, 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 good. Cool. Yeah. All, All right, right, so Joy-Con controllers. <laughs> So um, one of the questions this right off the bat begs this early in the in the video is yeah uh, what the difference in the graphical quality might be between TV blown up big and on the screen right this is obviously a doctored image so that right so we can't really garner what the graphical quality of the tablet screen is but I I can't really complain too much <laughs> yeah about how beautiful it is right cuz I'm wondering though, because like it is possible even for there, there are some games that just look better on a smaller screen because if it's the same graphic quality and it's just condensed to a smaller yeah. thing, it just looks like you know more higher definition to your eyes, you know. Yeah. Well, personally, I don't think I prioritize the graphics quality on on the handheld mode, mm-hmm. considering what you would prioritize most is the fact that it's portable, so. right? And honestly, what I'm really concerned to see is how well the backlighting and how well it will be outside. Right. Will I need to be angled to the sun at the perfect, you know, like, will I just be able to play this and see the screen at any time of day? Or if it's too much sun, is it going to be all blurry and, you know? Right. I agree. Uh, honestly, if if it's at least as good as the Vita, I'd be satisfied yeah, yeah, um, yeah. with that. I've never had a problem with the Vita. I felt sometimes I'm like, oh, I want the brightness to go a little higher, but it's never been bad, you know? Right, exactly. Um, okay, so he plays in the park, and next thing we got is uh, going to the airport. And, <laughs> of course. And the guy sits down waiting for a plane, and we see him um, sit down to somebody next to somebody else, and he starts, uh, you know, plugging in, playing next to her. Uh, but on the plane, now here's the thing. We see a close-up shot of where he puts in the cartridge there. And I can't 100% tell because normally a headphone jack, a portable, goes at the bottom. But the headphone jack and the cartridge insert are both next to each other in this screen here. And in the next scene, we see him sitting in the plane and the headphone jack is on the top. And he's playing it like that. But that wouldn't make sense to have it on top when you're like walking around or you're just sitting somewhere. That just feels awkward. The wire could fall on top of the screen. It's just right. kind of awkward. I'm wondering if it's going to be like an iPhone where the screen just orients whichever way is up to, depending on how you're holding it. Um, I don't know. I don't think – I actually don't think that's going to be the case since um, right on the, scre- on the scene we can see that – the switch has a little swivel so that you can mount it on a table. Right. But that makes sense if you're going to mount it because then you can't put the headphone jack in the same right. size as that. So the, right. that's set up so that you could mount it and then you could play it with the headphone jack on the top. And then, yeah, then it makes sense to have the headphone jack on top. Yeah. But if I'm it would walking have to be around, I don't want that headphone jack on the top of it and – I'm wondering if if I'm holding it the other way around, will the screen just flip upside down and now the headphone jack could be on the bottom just because now I'm holding it the opposite way? That's actually a pretty good uh, question. I actually, honestly, in my opinion, I don't think that's going to be the case uh, due to the orientation of the Joy-Con controllers. Ah, but I think here's they the have thing. a very specific. Yeah, I like. I don't know. Like we, I'm also wondering if that's possible. Could the Joy-Con controllers connect from either direction? Like yeah, that, that's true. I mean, yeah, that is a good point. If it if the screen has to orient both ways, that means the controllers have to slip in both ways, which might just be a mechanical trick that they're like, no, they can't pull that off. And maybe the headphone jack is just on top. Maybe yeah, I'm overthinking I, that. <laughs> I think you are, Casey. No, you overthink a lot of things. <clears throat> no, but no, I no, do. No, 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 no. Yeah. I do not. I, I I properly think them over. That's what this whole episode <laughs> is, and I think that that's a, a very feasible possibility. That's fair. Now, what I I actually suspect that uh, the the slots to put the Joy-Con controllers on each side will be different to prevent people from accidentally putting the Joy-Con controllers on the wrong slots. But so if, they want they try maybe they want to intuitively have the right side always slide into the right side of the controller. 
and the left side slide into the left. It's just so that mm. the same way as how if you have the Joy-Con controllers together, you can slide them into each other on the right orientation. Yeah, but you know, it wouldn't matter though. Like if, if they can go on either side, whatever side, let's say like I have my right Joy-Con controller, if it can go on either side of it, because there's nothing on the tablet itself that makes it look like it belongs in one orientation or another. It is just a blank tablet with not even any words written on it, you know? Right, right. So, like, if, if the right hand goes on what whatever side it slides into is now the right side of the screen. And if the screen flips, the screen flips. I mean... It's true. It, it actually... It, I would definitely like for it to be able to flip, but... I, I'm putting my money on the screen flips. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm I, going down there. I'm I'm betting on it not flipping. All Seems right, correct. First, in the future. our first wager of the new show. Here we go. It's on <laughs> already. It's so fast. Yes. All right. Anyway, at this point, we're looking at the airport scene. What got me incredibly excited right from the get-go is the fact that they were playing a very, very beloved game of mine. Oh, uh, which one? Uh, Skyrim. Yes, Skyrim. Yes. That is crazy. That I it took me a second to register. And I was like, like oh, wait a playing, second. He's playing a console. Wait, that's Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, so Skyrim Remastered is coming out very soon, and uh, it's pretty much confirmed at this point that there's going to be a Skyrim port for Nintendo Switch. Um, and the fact. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that it's a portable experience, you can play Skyrim anywhere you go without a laptop is is mind blowing it's it's a really big deal for me i think no that that is pretty huge that is um i mean just to show off third party support in the first place in this trailer you know and and third party sports always the hard thing on the nintendo consoles right they right. they vary especially on the launch they very rare get very few big cool third party titles they almost always have to do all the work themselves right right and um, th that's definitely a, a different topic that we can bring up in the future. But um, the number of third-party support that's shown so far it seems pretty promising to me. Right. Well, we saw that. Um, we saw. Uh, I'll, 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 we saw another one in this trailer. We we'll get to later. But one thing I heard also recently rumored about was because uh, Ubisoft mentioned that they're making a Beyond Good and Evil two. They didn't say anything about who they're making it for, but Ubisoft has pretty much always been one of those few guys that make launch titles for Nintendo consoles. That's that's true. Right. That's true. And they're in a situation right now because they're 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 being threatened, being taken over by Vivendi right now. Actually, so they're really <laughs> pulling out. Takeover. Yeah, it, it, it is going to lead to that most likely. Um, so they're doing whatever they can to like really make it like cash in their chips and make some money to like you know stand their ground in here. And making a Beyond Good and Evil 2 uh, is just one of the things that's tons of people's ears perked. Uh, it'll be good to see. I never actually played the first one, but it's just one of those titles everyone like raves right. about that I just never right. got around to. But yeah, I, I do think that is very likely going to be one of the launch titles that could get a lot of interest from people. I don't know if it's going to be a launch title. We, we really <laughs> – this is purely – this is purely speculation at this point. When I but, say you know, launch, it would I mean be amazing. First six months. First six months is the launch window of a, of a game. So I, I right. won't be there day one, but I think it's going to come out within the first six months. Yeah, and yeah, very much keep in mind that's just purely speculation on our part. Right. But it would be amazing. I think I think it would be a great opportunity for for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, airport scenes. He lands. He goes over to uh, another house, possibly. Uh, this reminds me of something that, that people I uh, tried to do with other game consoles, or like you know, um, the Ouya was actually tried to pitch itself like this. It was the kind of console right. that like you know hotels could just have in you know rooms, so people can go and download games and play whatever. It'd be a cheap system to just throw in things like that. But I can see hotels just having like docking stations for people who have their own you know yeah yeah their their, their own switch sense. and just put it in the docking station didn't cost us too much to put in there maybe they could buy it separately somehow yeah that's actually a really good point that i wanted to bring up i i was wondering if they would ever uh, if they would decide to release the dock 
separately from the console itself. I think it would make sense. It would make sense because I would like to have the dock uh, located in multiple TVs in my in my house. Yeah, right, right. I think definitely. that would be incredibly convenient. They could get into. You're right. They can get into the hotel business where they could sell the docks for cheaper and yeah. have them built into a hotel. Right. Um, and yeah, and people just bring their games right there. I don't want your Switch because you don't have my save games on there, right? right I want to bring right. my Switch and just plug it in. <clears throat> Easy peasy. And you know what? The docking station could probably be relatively cheap because it probably doesn't have a lot of moving parts, so to speak. It's just a connector, a charging station, you know? It, it right, exactly. It doesn't have to do a lot of work. Uh, it's Yeah, it's pretty brilliant since most of the hardware is most likely in the tablet itself. So Right. Um, and so, yeah, that's the scene I see where I don't see any wires going between it. But again, I, I know, it could just yeah. be the aesthetic choices they did. It might be the aesthetic. It could be the wires are wired through the wall. We don't know. Right. We yeah, can't yeah. confirm anything from that yet. <clears throat> so that that's where I'll, I'll admit that could be, you know, I, 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 me overlooking, you know, overthinking something. That's fine. <laughs> No, the speculation is warranted here. All right, so next scene goes into the car, and then that's the next crazy thing. The headrest mount for this thing that we see? Yeah, I see I see the headrest mount. Do you think that's actually going to be part of, of the offering? Or is that going to be a separate accessory? I think it'll probably be a separate accessory they sell. I don't think it'll come with the thing, but... I, but that seems like a great like, – such a cool idea just like to totally sell people on the idea of, you know, you're going to play our games everywhere um, and parents are going to love that. That is like, you know, if, if you don't have like a minivan that has those TVs behind, you know, the headrests, you're going to, you know, you're going to shell out the extra 20 bucks or whatever to buy this little attachment and hook the switch up and now it's a – multimedia system you know because in addition to playing games it'll probably right. be able to like you know download Plain. videos here and there and right now this is it was hinted at in the airport scene earlier but this is what really got me excited i love that each of the joy con controllers can be turned to the side into its own controller yes that's right so like Right, so yeah, if you you can have them connected together through that battery pack thing or whatever, and it's one controller with a bunch of buttons, or yeah, each each of the Joy Cons could be separate and become basically an NES controller with that. Yeah, like. I think I think that's just a, a brilliant idea. The fact that you can bring two player split screen co op anywhere with you, yes, is is amazing. It it, it actually it you know, replicates a console experience in, uh, in anywhere you go. Right. And you know what? Like, like, like I'm probably going to own the, you know, the, the game pad pro, right. I'm going to, I'm going to want right. to play. Oh, and that was the other thing we saw in like the, the other hotel room, or whatever. He picked up the, the full fledged pro controller, which looks like an Xbox 360 controller. Um, which, which is, is nice. Cause I, we haven't had like a real non gimmick controller available for a Nintendo console in a long right. time. Well, there's always been the pro controller for each past iteration, but yeah. this specific controller looks incredibly solid and, and more modern than the other ones so far. Right. They were just like, like, what what do people like? What do they work with? We'll just give them that option. Fine. They have their pro controller um, and whatever. But yeah, I'm I'm only going to have that maybe at home or if I know I'm going to like, oh, I'm going over JV's. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna pack an extra controller so for the full thing. But on day to day basis, if I just happen to run into you on the street or I'm hanging out, you know, I, I you know I stop in. And say, hey, you want to get a game of Mario Kart in? Sure. Bam! I have two viable controllers just as part of the system. Uh, yeah, that's so it's, slick. It's actually it's it's really brilliant that they can have such technology. And now. Looking at the screen of these two guys playing the split screen Mario Kart in the car, uh -huh. I'm wondering if it's utilizing Bluetooth technology to connect to that tablet, essentially. I guess and, so. Yeah, and if it's utilizing that Bluetooth technology even while it's attached to the screen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, is yeah, it, yeah. Is it always going to be wirelessly controlled or connected to the tablet? Or if you... If you dock the Joy-Con controllers into the tablet, will it 
switch to a different interesting like for battery mode. saving purposes basically right, exactly. yeah no that's interesting i i wonder i i wouldn't be surprised if it's always bluetooth but um i can see yeah your point yeah. with that because yeah, yeah he one of the things we forgot to mention in the plane was yeah he on the plane he propped it up with that little leg and then he was just playing it with the two halves not separated. connected yeah separated not connected as one controller but he was just like you know his arms yeah. were like you know all, all totally apart, but they were still playing as one. Right, controller. it's it's kind of reminiscent of the Wiimote and Nunchuck right. without the wires. So right, and it, I didn't like see that. anything to make me think there's any motion control. Like there's no waggling <laughs> involved here. Yeah, I I didn't notice any of that either. I think that's probably by design. Yeah, and I I think that. Essentially, I think they're ditching motion control for right. this generation. I also didn't see any touch screen control or anything like that. No one, like, tapped a screen in anything. Um, they might be saving that. That could be something they're just like, you know, we didn't feel like showing it here. We got to save some reveals. Maybe, like, you know, when you're in the menu screen, you're selecting games, you'll do the touch screen. But uh, I didn't see anything to allude to this being a actual, like, touch screen tablet so it's possible this is only controlled through the controllers. But. Right. We we don't know for sure how that's going to work. Right. I think I think they really should include a touchscreen because it's an instinct for people nowadays. If you see a tablet like mm -hmm. mobile device, you're more inclined to touch it to control it. So that would be a missed opportunity if they don't go that route. Yeah, and you know what? If they are, it does fit with their strategy for you know just being more mobile like. And if they want to port, like, the next most popular iPhone game over to the Switch, which is totally possible now. Like, people right. can just totally switch. Like, Vainglory could come out for Switch. Yeah, that's technically possible if, if, if it has a touchscreen. If it has a touchscreen. Well, we'll see how it works. We There's been no evidence of the touchscreen, but that's right. not necessarily – doesn't necessarily mean it's not happening. Right. I do I, – you know, I, I do – now that I'm just saying it out loud, I do feel like it's too in line with their strategy for them not to have it. Yeah. And they pretty much started the whole mobile touch gaming right. situation with the DS. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is like the – ultimate iteration of everything that is a 3ds and a wii combined it really kind of has to have that yeah yeah it's the it's the next generation of their philosophy so it's mm -hmm. combining their most successful avenue which is handheld gaming with the console mm -hmm. so we'll see uh next set we go to the uh the guys playing basketball <laughs> yeah which is which is kind of a silly concept. Eh, yeah. The whole thing is kind of cheesy, you know, with the music and stuff. But it, it it's cool. Like, people going out, they're showing you, you're going out, you're living life. You're not playing games locked away in your house and not living. You know, you're going out, you're taking your dogs for walk, you're flying around the world, you're driving around, and now you're playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and then after right. you're playing basketball, you're chilling out. Two people have it, and they show us how... Basically, you can replace split screen with two whole screens. Right. It's it's kind of amazing how how good this looks. It's promising that you can get a sort of LAN style console multiplayer mm -hmm. um, just by having these handhelds close to each other. Yeah. If if you look, there's there. It's completely wireless. These two are these two. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, these two switches are connected to each other without any wires. And I, you know, I'm not sure if this is true, but I, I just assumed by the way they were playing, like one team was totally on one side. So like one team was playing of, of two players on one screen and the other team was playing on the other screen, uh, which makes me think of right all the way. Like that's so many possibilities for game design right there. Right, like, exactly. Um, so there, the asymmetry of that could be really, yeah. really fun. Yeah, like two players could be – like the lamest example I could think of off the top of my head. You could play Battleship and both people could be looking at the screen and, you know, one sees his thing, one sees the other. Or if – what was that? That, that four-player Pac-Man game. Right, Pac-Man versus? Yeah, Pac-Man versus. One player is doing one thing. He sees – the whole screen and the other players only see selected bits of it. Uh, there's, yeah, there, there's a lot of good options on that. Yeah. 
It's it's very exciting to see what they're going to do with local multiplayer here. Yeah. I'm not a Just sports because fan because of the enough. console specs. Yeah, I'm not enough of a sports fan to know what you know, series of NBA game this was they were playing. So <laughs> I'm sure somebody out there would recognize like the style and could tell me like, oh, no, that's NBA Jam or something. I don't know. Right. I thought it was kind of funny that they would be playing basketball in real life and then they just switched to playing basketball on the game. <laughs> But, you know, they're showing off what they can do. So. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, then we see the girl at the party. She's um, she, she's using – and she goes back to using the two halves. The, what are they called again? The pro jo- – the, the Joy-Cons? Joy-Cons connected yeah. to the thing that I think is the battery charger or, like, the core battery uh, pack just for a, yeah. a little bulkier kind of control. feels a little – looks like it fits your hands a little better. Uh, right. She goes to the party. She brings it over there. Uh, I, I don't think I saw anything new in that one particularly. I don't know if I missed some feature they were showing off with the party scene. No, I I, th- I think they were just showing off, you know, day to day use of it. Yeah, and you know, she just propped it up at the neighbor's house, and now they're playing outside. So I, I quickly looked it up. I think it's called the Joy-Con grip, where it gives you a bit of a. Con- uh, standard controller grip to these little joy con okay so. it had little leds which makes me think it also like tells it has you batteries the power like the power level or something yeah uh, which is not surprising mm-hmm. i guess the the big deal in the scene is that i think it hints at a new mario game they did show some mario yes that was one of the games we got to see um not a surprise but it is good to see like yeah, there definitely is a 3D Mario platformer that's going to be on this because those were all scenes that aren't in any other Mario game. So right, right, and and it is from the you know top down or third angle, I guess. It's the prescript perspective that's similar to uh, Super Mario Galaxy. So yeah, yeah, it's interesting they're going that route instead of the you know new Super Mario Brothers route. Right. So. Yeah, you know, going back to the 3D and. Uh... You know, I was just listening to like a Retronauts on NC- on the uh, Mario sixty four. <laughs> it's just yeah, uh, it's 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 you know it, the Galaxy games were great. I mean, I, I would love to see more things like that. And just seeing Mario here, I'm like, all right, what are they gonna do? Because Mario always like takes advantage totally of like what the new system what can do, capable of. Right? What are they gonna do with this? Like, <laughs> we'll see. And you know. Um, I, I'm sure they're going to go into more co-op Mario shenanigans with that. Ah, yeah, yeah. I think it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. And then we get to the final scene, which is super exciting for me personally. Uh huh. So okay, so it transitions into uh, what looks like a convention stage where a bunch of people are gathering around strategizing something, and then it starts escalating into these teams who look like an esports team. Mm-hmm. And eventually, you see them gather, converge, get super pumped up, and they reveal it's a gigantic Splatoon esports stage. Yes, right. And they're all playing. They're playing four player, just sitting on the floor, like you know, in a circle. Every one of them has their own switch. And at first, they're all playing. I I, I don't know if they were just playing each other to like practice, or they were playing yeah, the other team. Um, right? Yeah, they, they were probably doing a warm up. Yeah, against each other. And then they all go on the stage, and it's, yeah, eSports. Like, hey, guys, we're going to make Splatoon a competitive eSport. And now, obviously, we can just – we don't necessarily mean that this is hinting at something. It, it, there's no commitment on right. Nintendo's side to push an eSports scene, but this is definitely a concept that they might explore in the future. Yeah. I, I It's funny. I just had a conversation. Uh, I was – one of my – old friends uh, who now works at Major League Gaming. Oh, MLG, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. And she's just started talking to me today after the Switch you know, trailer. I just wanted to hear my opinions on things. And um, and I was telling her, like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of hyped. I mean, maybe you guys are interested in the fact that, like, you know, they've made a clear pitch to you guys saying, hey, we want, you know, we want to be a Major League Gaming kind of thing. And... She said, like, oh, that would be cool, but the big problem with any Nintendo game going eSport is that it's not necessarily the games that matter. It's the people and the reality shows level drama that surrounds them. And Nintendo <laughs> gamers tend to be just nicer people 
that don't get involved in petty drama the same way that like you know jerk like like people who play like call of duty like the people don't care about people how well they do they just care about who's the top players and what's the drama going on like who's the biggest character who's the most flamboyant who who says you know crap on stage that's what they are looking for they're looking for the drama that's interesting yeah that's an interesting perspective because you know i i didn't think about how nintendo players are uh different they are have a different mindset for yeah. the games that they play i mean though yeah smash brothers right there's so much drama there right so. but you know here's the thing it's like like yeah you're gonna find people you i'm not saying there's no such thing as a jerky nintendo player who causes drama sure but is there enough of them to make the esports world like say all right we can sell this like there's enough of you and it's over the top enough for it it's just per capita we're nicer people nintendo gamers <laughs> well <laughs> yeah that's true though um <laughs> Uh, I think I think there is enough excitement for the Splatoon, uh, Splatoon esports, uh, considering it's kind of already delved, been explored mm-hmm. by Nintendo. Mm-hmm. If you remember the Nintendo World Championship back uh, last year or so, yeah, uh, featured Splatoon. Yes, right. It featured four versus four Splatoon, and it got people incredibly excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was something that people wanted to see more of. I think. Yeah. Th- that, and let me be clear though that was not my opinion that I don't I think Nintendo doesn't have you know flamboyant enough players to be in eSport. I do think these games are just different enough and creative enough that they could draw in and create um, an eSports round that's just different than the norm. Um, so if they're looking for the drama, I'm sure there'll be some characters there's gonna be I know plenty of entertaining characters at my pokemon league who i totally was like no these guys could totally you know be on make the drama yeah make the drama on an mlg stage but it's also the games themselves are just so much more colorful to watch and interesting and and just different than the normal here's an fps and or here's you know here's league of legends or something like that that are all solid games they're very mechanical but they don't have that same Nintendo magic that you just can't copy any other way. Right. It, it might be the fact that it seems a lot more lighthearted and friendly. Yeah. And it, it does, maybe it doesn't foster that competitive spirit quite as much. Right, but, right. I mean, well, but we, I, think, we, I think it's possible. You know, let's just look at the Pokemon World Championships for, uh, you know, a whole drama and yeah. spectacle. I mean, we've, we've seen... We've seen plenty of drama, and I just looked into it briefly just to find out about. Well, I was like hearing stories about like the cheater, not cheater, but the guy who was like gaming the system with like clocking yeah. out and stuff like that, timing out. Yeah, timing out, and they fixed that that problem. But that guy, I was looking at all his things, and he was he was give he flipped the fans the bird in one of his tournaments. Like they yeah. were they were booing him for timing out, and he flipped the bird to them on stage. And I see there's. There's definitely drama, and I yeah. think there's a lot of there's a lot of potential in in Nintendo esports, especially with the Switch being so portable. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. We'll, we'll see. And you know, here's the other thing: it's just it's. I feel it's a fact. It's not really a fact, but it's a given that the install base for this is going to be higher than depending on the price point. We have no idea what the price point of this is going to be. Um, but I think if it's anywhere reasonable, if it's under $500, right, I feel that the install base is going to be very wide and people are going to be playing maybe a smaller library, but there's going to be a lot of people playing the same game. That's going to have a larger pool to draw from for these competitive things. Like they're going to have plenty of people who are going to get into Splatoon because of this maybe, or play, you know, Pokemon competitively because we're going to get a console Pokemon out of this. Oh my gosh, that's a whole nother topic that I, want, yeah. that I would love to discuss. We'll have to talk about it another time, definitely. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like that alone I do. changes everything about what we could expect to see in a competitive, you know, uh, Switch world. Right, I totally agree. This, the release of this trailer, I, I think caused or spread more buzz and excitement than even the Wii U. Yeah, when the Wii U was first announced, people were a little more tepid about it. But I was one the, of them. I was totally, yeah. eh, don't really feel it. 
Yeah, but the Switch, it, it, it looks like it has the ability to appeal to a much wider audience than the Nintendo diehards. Right. Like, at work, I have a bunch of uh, gamer coworkers, and while none of them are particularly Nintendo fans, they were all buzzing about this the mm-hmm. switch console yes it, it's it's something that i think can appeal to more than just the diehard nintendo fans and um this is this is nintendo's chance to get really get back in the game i think this is gonna have wii level buzz like original wii which was just it you know it took over the world for about a year before it started like tapering off but for that year it, wii was just it everyone's talking about the you know the, the waggle controls and you know, all those, the, the friggin' the bowling games or just all those, like, little things were so charming to people that it just became the system. It, more so than any of these super powerful, you know, PlayStations or Xboxes for a while. Right, right. That's the thing. With the Wii, it had, it had that novelty of, of waggle controls, but w- the thing that holding the Wii back was the requirement of the motion controls and the sheer... <laughs> Uh, lack of graphical capabilities yeah, for yeah. It. it. It it was so behind what was out there right now, or what was out there at the time, that people felt like it was a compromise. And for this, I don't think people will feel like they're compromising uh, the graphical no. you know yeah. capabilities just to get the mobility. I agree. I agree. And and yeah, I, I could go on more about that. I wanted to ask you. What do you have any idea what you could would speculate how much you think this is going to end up costing? So there's already been speculation out there. Um, people are, are guessing that it's going to be about around two hundred ninety nine. Well, that's great. I mean, if that's yeah, true, I would I would probably be I would feel comfortable if this is anything under four hundred dollars person. Right. So for 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 me, my limit would be about three hundred ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be the upper limit. I feel like it's realistic to expect it to be about three forty nine. Yeah, yeah. And my most optimistic guess would be about two ninety nine. Yeah, if it, yeah. If it, oh, I, I think that would be the sweet spot. That if it was two ninety nine, that's it. I think that that it, it would just take over. It, it would spread so fast. And maybe you know, op, maybe they'll have the different versions. Here's the one, the two ninety nine for the console and the regular controller. Here's the four hundred dollar version that has the the headrest mount, the the pro controller packaged in there, um, and you know a whole bunch of other little gimmicky things that you know the accessories people want. Now I'm going to be completely honest. Yeah. Uh, if this was about five hundred bucks, I'd still get it. I'm, but I'm, I I'm, think... I'm probably going to end up buying it no matter what. Like I'm pretty yeah. committed to getting this right now. Right. Uh, obviously, yeah. considering the podcast, but yes. Um, yeah, I think the sweet spot it, or the optimal, the biggest hope for us is two ninety nine, and realistic about about three ninety nine. That's what I think. Yeah. All right. Um, the only other thing I guess I wanted to say, mention was a couple little things that we didn't see, like Mies. We didn't see Mies. That's a good point. We didn't see Mies, and I think. I think it would be a mistake to miss out on me. I think it was. Would it be a me stake? (laughs) How did I know that was coming? (laughs) Oh yes, it would be a me (laughs) stake if they if they miss out on me's this generation. Mm -hmm. It's it was something that had mass appeal that didn't really intrude on anything, and you know it's it's such an iconic thing with Nintendo consoles, and I don't think anyone has a problem with it. they're, right. they're just if, universally loved, and I, yeah, they have to work them back into there sometime. Well, yes. If 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 people disliked it, it was a feature that you can pretty much ignore anyway. Right. So, like Street Pass it, has become for me. Right. Exactly. And uh, that's another topic. I don't think this will include Street no, Pass, no, but yeah. But I this this whole console is really lighting a fire in in my excitement. So yeah, yeah. All right. I. That's all we can really probably fit in here now, other than March 2017 release date. So we got some time to absorb this. We're probably going to get a little more reveals here and there. They're they're probably going to draw out features like, you know, a month from now we'll hear, oh, by the way, here's here's how the touch controls are going to work. Or here's how the UI is going to work when you load it up. Like that's going to be a whole thing, I'm sure. Right. And, you know, it's 
just five months away, Casey. It's it it's actually a pretty quick turnaround from announcement to release, all things considered. Yeah, it's five but, months. Yeah. Well, but, now you yeah, make we'll it feel s- like it's a long time. I was just like, ah, oh, March. <laughs> that's like now that we're almost in 2017 now. And okay, now that we quantified it, it feels like forever. Not half a <laughs> five months is almost half a year. Oh gosh, you just made me feel like it's so far off. But we're gonna try to do a thing. So this this will be our pilot. Like I said, for the uh, we already got the um, switchcast dot com. <laughs> <laughs> we acted fast we acted that. fast it, it was just and you know what the other thing the name just felt right it's just like i don't think any i once i said we should make a switch cast like no one said well what other titles should we think about it just like yeah that's what we're calling the show right <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> yeah i mean we might run into a few issues with tim and ben but we'll oh see. god <laughs> tim and ben tim and ben i'll let viewers find out what the heck yeah, that means <laughs> I'm sure if you Google the Switchcast, you'll find out what it is real fast. Yeah, but this is this is kind of where we're we're heading now. Yeah, Casey. No, I think this is the future for us, and um, I'll, I'll I'll just do a you know a little closure up here is that I'm probably going to discontinue charging anybody for who's a patron right now, and I'm probably going to go back to doing maybe bi-weekly podcasts um, as I relax on things and I try to kind of recuperate from just things going on in life right now. And we're going to try to set up things for this, uh, switch cast going on here. So right. we'll see how that goes, but I'm still going to do the pocket players. I'm just not going to do it every week right now. Um, but next time after I get back from taking this trip, I'm taking this road trip around the East coast tomorrow morning. That sounds fun. And, uh, when I get back from that, I'll I'll put up another podcast uh, with games I've been playing, and we'll catch up on some of that there. But right, and I, I I do think it's it would be worthwhile noting that this is definitely not necessarily the format that we're going to do for right. future episodes. We just had to put um, something out there today. Yeah, this was essentially a outlineless stream of conscious. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for making a time to get on here and chat with me, JV. Of course. Yes. And if anyone wants to uh, catch up on us more, Joe, check out our – join us on the Discord chat where we're basically going to be talking about this all the time. And I'm even in there on front of my phone. So even, I'll, even while I'm away, I'll be chatting about the Switch and any other portable games over at our chat room, which is on uh, thepocketplayers.com slash chat. That links you to that's the right. Discord chat. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So we'll have to think of a new catch line for the Switch cast. But – for tonight, I'll say to everybody, keep it in your pocket. All right, keep it in your pocket. <laughs>